when we talk about measuring how much gas is present either in a cylinder like an oxygen tank or even atmospheric pressure where the gas is not confined to a closed container, we often are going to look at a pressure reading. So pressure, we're going to uh, give the symbol P and pressure, the units are uh, atmosphere units or millimeters of mercury. We could also talk about pressure units in pounds per square inch or if you've had physics you've probably talked about pressure in terms of pascals. In this section of chemistry we are going to be using those two units an atmosphere or millimeters of mercury. And this generally we just read this off of a gauge so if we put air in our tires, the tire gauge has a reading in terms of PSI. The barometer that the weatherman uses or um, that, that's generally the, the best way to measure pressure because it responds to a column of mercury. So MMHG is millimeters of mercury. That's a barometric reading. So maybe a needle valve shows that if you're taking blood pressure or an actual column of mercury uh, if we're actually looking at a barometer. So the pressure of a gas can vary and we're going to see that the pressure of a gas can depend on its volume. So if we sit on a balloon and make the volume decrease by sitting on the balloon the pressure is going to go up. We can also increase the pressure of a gas by increasing the temperature. So if we heat up a gas the gas not only is going to expand in volume, but the pressure could go up. So for example, if we throw an aerosol can into a fire, the volume of that can is not going to change. As the temperature goes up, the pressure is going to go up, and at some point that volume will change by the can exploding. So these three things are related mathematically, and we're going to look at some of those relationships. For volume measurements, uh, we might have so many milliliters of a gas or uh, so many liters of a gas. So generally, the volume of the gas is the size of its container. So we're going to talk about uh, containers of gas. And if we don't have a container that's storing the gas, then the gas is going to escape into the atmosphere. So we're going to be talking about gases that are in a balloon or they're in a cylinder. Okay. And the temperature of a gas, our temperature might be in degrees Celsius, but we have to convert that to Kelvin. So we have to use the temperature scale that has an absolute zero. So we'll convert to Kelvin. And the easiest way to remember that is just we add 273 degrees. For example, room temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. So if we add 273, we're going to get 298 degrees Kelvin. So the difference between the Celsius and Kelvin scale, uh, the Celsius temperature scale is based on where water freezes, uh, so water freezes at zero degrees Celsius and boils at a hundred degrees Celsius. So this is the boiling point of water. And so the Celsius scale was pretty much just uh, invented. So a guy named Celsius put a thermometer in boiling water and the level of the mercury, uh, he just marked that that level and called it a hundred. Then he put the thermometer in ice water and the temperature of ice water he marked that value and called it zero. Okay. So the Celsius scale is basically based on where water uh, freezes or melts or where water boils or condenses. The Kelvin scale, so if we're looking over here at Kelvin, Kelvin temperature scale has an absolute zero. 
So we can't get colder than zero degrees Kelvin. And the melting point of water is 273 degrees Kelvin. So melting and freezing occurs at the same temperature, just like boiling or condensing, which is a gas going back into a liquid. So the boiling point of water is 373 degrees Kelvin. So a Celsius degree, there's 100 degrees difference between both scales. But the size of 1 degree Kelvin is the same size as 1 degree Celsius. But it is possible to have negative temperatures on the Celsius scale. That's not so with the Kelvin scale. So anytime we are going to put the temperature in a mathematical formula, the temperature has to be in Kelvin. Okay. So the way we can figure out how much gas is present, we can uh, look at a pressure gauge and we generally know the size of the container that it's in and we can also, uh, whatever temperature the room is that the gas is in, would also be the temperature of the gas. On the next slide, I'm going to write down three mathematical relationships that we're going to use. And depending on the way the question is worded, we have to decide which relationship we're going to use. We're going to look at Charles' law, Boyle's law, and the ideal gas law on the next slide.